Hey language lovers, it's Jessica with For the Love of Languages. Welcome to the fifth week of the 52 Pickup Project series. This week's language is Hungarian. Hungarian is a Finno-Ugric language of the Uralic language family. It is the official language in Hungary and is spoken as a minority language in parts of Austria, Romania, Croatia, Serbia, Slovakia, Slovenia, and Ukraine. There are about 14 to 15 million native speakers. Hungarian is not a part of the Indo-European language family like many languages of Europe. It is grammatically very different. Such differences include the use of suffixes, no grammatical gender, and vowel harmony. Those three things alone require the expertise of a native speaker and teacher. So I went to italki to find somebody that might be able to help. That's where I found Jolt. He was full of information to make Hungarian seem, well, not so scary. He explained things like suffixes and vowel harmony to me, those things that tend to intimidate prospective students. We also talked about fun things such as name day and citizenship tests in Hungary, poetry, one of his exceptional students, and why he loves teaching Hungarian. He was also able to explain why having a teacher can help you succeed in learning the language. So I'm doing this, this project where, we're, um, where I'm exploring world languages, and mm -hmm. uh, I've always been curious about Hungarian because it's got this reputation for being really hard. I don't know uh -huh. who it's, real, it's supposed to be really hard for, maybe native English speakers, but yeah. any idea why it has that reputation? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I have an idea why. Uh, well, first of all, the pronunciation is very different than English. Uh, so it, uh, uh, it's very straightforward, but, but it sounds very different. So many of my students or friends who, like international friends who went to Hungary, uh, they noticed or they, they commented that like, they don't even understand how people can make these sounds, you know, like when they hear uh, someone speak on the street or something like that. And the, so the pronunciation must be one of the things. And the other one could be that, uh, you know, it's an agglutinative language. And that means that the grammar is completely different than for English. Uh, basically, we have many prefixes and many suffixes. And uh, uh, that means that we can create many long, long words and sometimes a whole sentence can just be one word. Like, for example, I am going home uh -huh. will just be one word in Hungarian, and it's going to be hoza megyek. That's one word. Hoza, the hoza part means home, megy is, uh, uh, is go, and ek is I. Hoza megyek. Home go I. I'm going home. And it's one word. So it's a, li a little bit, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get your head around this kind of way of thinking. Okay, and uh, I'm, I'm assuming there's a certain order that that has to go into because I noticed you said home, go, I, and not I, go, home. Can you, can exactly. you elaborate on that a little bit more? Right, well, so basically uh, prefixes will tell you where, uh, like in many cases, where something is happening, and then the verb is in the middle, and then the suffix tells you when it happened in the past, in the future, uh, who did it, I, you, me, or him, uh, and so, yes, definitely there is an order, but you know, uh, in Hungarian you can conjugate not only verbs, but you can conjugate almost anything. You can conjugate nouns, in a sense. It's very interesting, because, like, let's say there is a word dog, and then uh, you can conjugate it and say, so, the word for dog would be kutya. Uh, kutya. And uh, kutyam is my dog. Kutyad, your dog. Kutyaya, his dog. So basically, the, the way that we you do the possessive as well would be with a suffix. Yeah, it's like everything is almost like a suffix. So we have um, many, like, many suffixes, you know. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's really easy to understand uh, what they are used for, but they are difficult to remember because of the sheer number of them. Yeah. I, I think. 
Yeah. Where do most of your students come from? Uh, many, many people come from uh, America, actually. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, because, you know, uh, during the course of history, there have been many, many uh, revolu like revolutions and some like uh, dark times. And so many people fled to America from Hungary. And now uh, they are rediscovering their Hungarian roots for some reason. Uh, and actually the, hung the Hungarian government has uh, made it much easier to get citizenship. So I, I get many American students who would like to uh, like me to prepare them for the citizenship interview or just, you know, start start speaking their their language of origin, basically. So that's that's it's, really it's very nice. Good. Yeah. And and I have many, many examples when people travel to Budapest and they think that it's such a unique and beautiful place that, you know, they fall in love with it and they just want to learn the language. Or they see, or they see a beautiful uh, Hungarian girl, and they they want to learn the language for them, or something like that. <laughs> oh, that's that's beautiful, uh, especially people wanting to to reconnect with their with their roots. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So whenever they they contact you for a lesson, what what is your typical first lesson like? Okay, yeah. Uh, so basically, I just give them a short background of the whole country and I want to figure out like what level they might be on are they just starting out or do they know some things already uh, but you know I usually tell them that this is a country of 10 million people and it's very unique in Europe uh, uh, Hungary like I always tell them that Hungary used to be a lot bigger uh, it, throughout the history it, it has lost a lot of its territory in the world wars so basically, uh, even though there are 10 million Hungarians inside of Hungary, uh, 5 million are living right around the country. So it's basically a country that uh, like has uh, like mostly Hungarian population right around its, uh, its borders. So it, it, that's, that's something very interesting. And, um, and it's a little bit Asian, so the origin origin of hung, hung, Hungarian people is a big question, but basically no one doubts that it's a sort of an Asian nation. Like, we, there, there are questions whether uh, that we come from North Asia, like from the Uralic Mountains, or around China, or something like that. But, but like, with, with all sources, it's, uh, it's, it's Asian. And so we can, uh, we can turn like we can see this from the names, for example. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, last names comes come first, and then first names come last. So my my name would be like last name, first name, you know. Um, and then dates for dates as well. It's the year which comes first, mm -hmm. and then the month, and then the day. So we always go from bigger to smaller, bigger to oh. smaller, with oh. with addresses as well. Like first it's the country, then the zip code, then the uh, city name, then the uh, street name, and then the house number. Uh, so from bigger to smaller. Yeah, I think that's that's very logical to to operate that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but mostly Asian countries do that, okay. uh, and because in the Western world, you know, it's always like day, month, year, or something mm -hmm. like that. In America, it's month, day, year, uh, and. Uh, so what else? Um, yeah, uh, you know, I always start at the first lesson with the alphabet. Uh -huh. And I don't know if I'm able to show you, like I can share the screen if, okay. if, if that would be okay. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Oh, cool. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so I will try to share. Yeah, and so here you can see the Hungarian alphabet. I don't know if it's visible. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, what you can all immediately notice is that there are these double letters, the, like C, S, B, Z. There's also a triple letter, D, Z, S, uh -huh. like that. Okay, and every single vowel has a short and long form, uh, one, one without the accent and one with the accent. So altogether, there are 44 letters, which is uh -huh. uh, m much more than the English alphabet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
And it is really important to note that these letters, these double letters and triple letters, they count as one letter. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, for example, the word for Magyarok, yeah, Magyarok is Hungarians. Magyarok. Yeah, Magyarok. Uh, this gy, this j sound, is actually just one letter. So, if we want to count how many letters there are in this word, it would be one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven letters, because the GY is just one. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a uh, yeah, it's interesting, um, and there are there is a reason for that, and that is because if we check the old Hungarian alphabet, which was the Hungarian alphabet like, met like a thousand years ago, it had uh, like specific symbols for each letter. Oh. Yeah, like that. And so, uh, as you can see, the, the, the sign for C, the letter C, and the sign for the letter CS, which is C, mm -hmm. is completely different. So they are actually completely different letters if we consider the Asian way of writing. So the only reason why they appear similar, the C and CS, is because I think when Hungarians switched to the Latin alphabet, there were just not enough letters, so they had to make up some new ones. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and you know, like this, this type of uh, ancient alphabet is still being taught today in primary schools. So you could, you can actually, like, in, in a primary school, uh, mm -hmm. you can choose to learn this kind of writing and read some books with this kind of, uh, with this kind of letters. That's, and, that's really interesting. So it's old Hungarian and okay, so it's it's still it's in use currently. Well, it's not in use, but oh. it's just something that we are proud of, you know, and it's like we it's 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 also a, a way to to, I don't know, train the children's brain, you know, to mm -hmm. to like learn something, something that's Hungarian, but also useful, like it helps language skills maybe uh, and you know like um, whenever you travel around Hungary and you get and you get into a new village or a new town uh, below the current town name there is always the ancient way of writing of the town's name as well yeah so for example yeah this would be Vonyartsvashegy and then <laughs> yeah that was really good for a first try. <laughs> and, Thanks. Yeah, and uh, and the interesting thing is, if I like tried to match the different characters, we would have to read the old reading or the old way of writing from right to left. Yeah, so the basically the Asian way. Yeah, okay. from right to left. So yeah, that's that's also something really interesting. Another thing that I uh, wanted to show is the re is if you check a Hungarian dictionary, these different letters, like let's say the DZS, have mm -hmm. their own heading. Yeah, they are actually a separate letter. Okay. Uh, so this DZS is the is the English J sound, like a J. J. Okay. Yeah, yeah, J. Just just so regular. My name would start with that if I were trying to. Hungarianize it. I would start with DZS. Yeah, it would be. Actually, it 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 has been Hungarianized, and it is like that. Jessica. How interesting. Are there uh, are there any people in Hungary that use that name, or is that? Oh yeah, it is an it's an official name. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like this. This would be an official name. There is actually a count, like there is actually a given number of names that you can give to a child, and Jessica is one of them. Actually, oh. uh, an interesting thing would be we could check the the name day for Jessica. So, like I would say, uh, Jessica Nevnap. Yeah, Nevnap would be the name day. And uh, okay, so let's check. And it says, oh, what does it say? Oh, yeah. Ju July 17th would be your name day. If you were Hungarian or if you went to Hungary and lived there, 
<laughs> on July 17th, I would, everyone would be like, happy name day, Jessica, happy name day. And uh, oh, people would, might even give you some flowers or some gifts because in Hungary, name day is as important as the birth, as a birthday. Oh, it's like wow, almost the same. Yeah, Almost my birthday same. is in July too, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, some parents in Hungary will choose their baby's name based on the calendar to, like, to see what, which, which name is close to their birth date. <laughs> okay, Something. so uh, is, this, yeah. is this similar to um, uh, name days that you may find in, um, you know, like in, some, uh, in some religions or is this like a secular type of thing it has it has its roots in christianity oh, okay. uh, basically you know like for example uh it's very interesting uh for us santa claus comes on the december 6th mm -hmm. and uh, the reason is because the the nicholas day nicholas day based on our calendar is that day so that's when santa claus saint nicholas comes uh and it's not and christmas Christmas is actually uh, on Christmas Day, on Christmas Eve, basically, on the 24th. It's little Jesus who comes, not Santa Claus. It's little Jesus. Oh, yeah. that's, that's interesting. My, uh, actually, my name day is uh, December the 6th uh, for St. Nicholas because my middle name is Nicole, so. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it has Christian roots, like uh, the December 31st will be Sylvester. And that's, uh, I think, yeah, I don't know, uh, but, but basically, yeah. Uh, but you know, like nowadays there are so many international names, like, as you can see, Jessica is not, a it's not a an ancient Hungarian name. It has, it has appeared, uh, recently probably. And so they are, the, the calendar is always updated with new names. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So it's just a little bit random as well, I think. <laughs> Okay, uh, and yeah. Uh, How about so some there... of these other other letters? Um, like uh, I, I see the like your name, for instance. You we see the Z S and the yeah. S Z. How how are those pronounced? Okay, so the Z S is Z, like when you say ple pleasure, treasure, Z oh. Z. Yeah. So my name would be Jolt. Jolt. Yeah, and then the SZ, which is like often confused, but it's the other way around. That would be the letter S, like a, when a snake says, S, like sour. Okay. Yeah. And in Hungarian, the letter S just on its own, mm -hmm. without anything else, would be the letter, would be the sound SH, like sharp. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. And the CS, which also contains an S, that would be the Ch, like chocolate. Okay. Ch. Yeah, and then the C, uh, that would be the T, like tsunami. Tsunami. Tse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and one one other, okay, I just wanted to show something that I like to show my, my students. Like, what would be the alphabetical order uh, between tsukor and chikor? Which one would come first? Um, well, thinking of it from a, a Latin stand, Latin alphabet or an English standpoint, I would I would yeah. guess the second one, but I see you have them <laughs> reversed. Right? No, no, no. There's no order here. That's why it's an exercise. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So you might be right, but you know, uh, if we check the actual alphabet and oh. we go up, we go up. To the, yeah, to the C. Uh, yeah, you can see that at the letter C, there are words like Tula, Tsumi, Tsupan, Tsupog, Tsvichek. But then huh. when we go down, <gasps> that's when the Ch, that's when the Ch starts. Okay. So, yeah, like Chabai. And so with the English mind, well, Chabai, the CS, should come before the CV, but since, but since CS is a letter in itself, which comes yeah. after C, 
it must be after. So everything that starts with the CS will be after the CU, CV, CZ. So it was a tricky exercise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. OK. Um, and a very interesting as thing as well. OK, uh, so this is very uh, controversial and not, not, uh, uh, not very commonly known because we, we don't learn this at school. But I have found uh, uh, a book which, uh, which in its introduction basically uh, says that Hungarian and English are the closest language relatives in the world. It means like the two languages that are the closest to each other are Hungarian and English. And wow. there are, <laughs> okay. there, yeah, and there are one around like 1000 pages. Of, it's like basically a dictionary and it lists all of the words which, which are really, really similar in Hungarian and English. And I usually uh, use this example for my students to show them that, you know, like maybe there will be some similarities and you can actually relate some things to each other. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like the word foot, mm -hmm. we know what that means. But in Hungarian, foot means to run. But you run with your foot. Yeah, so right. foot, foot. Mm -hmm. Sail is when you're sailing on the lake, for example. But sail in Hungarian is wind. So you need, you need wind to sail. And it's like so similar. Child and cholad are so similar. Child means a, a child, but then cholad is family. But a child is your family. So it's like, it's so interesting how, uh, like hi, hi and hej. Hej is a mountain and hi, we know what that means. A, a mountain is high. Right. And yeah, and so yeah, age. Uh, if if an old person will be called og, and it's so similar to age, mm -hmm. and wild and vod, and house and has, and so 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 many other examples. So this is not very commonly known, but I I use this to help my students remember certain words and concepts. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, and. Uh, one other very interesting thing in Hungarian would be uh, uh, vowel harmony. Vowel harmony is actually really, really, uh, um, really interesting because it, it says that whenever you have a word which contains uh, certain vowels, the suffixes that you add to those to that word and the prefixes will have the same type of vowels as the word itself. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's possible in Hungarian to have an inner language, which is called Esperante. Yeah, that's a language inside of a language, basically. Esperante means that uh, in, in Hungarian, you can speak in a way that only uses the, le the E sound. Yeah, there's no, nothing else, just E, just E, just the letter E. Yeah, like okay. mer, menjek esperante. Leszereltem kerekemet, mert meg kellett tennem. Emellett meg cserje felett, szedret szedtem csendben. Megettem, de tenyeremet menten befestette. Elnevettem gyermek lelkem, s merengtem felette. Esteledet, s mennymestere lepelt engedett le. Lelkem csendje szeretetben, megremeget benne. Fekete lett cserje, perjes leheletben szellem, remek tervem, merre menjek, megfenekled bennem. Lesve lestem rengetegben, sem erre sem mentek, nem lehetnek messze, egy, egyszer erre kereshetnek. Kedvesemnek kecses teste jelent meg mellettem, s kerekemet megszerelte, mert szeretett engem. Uh, this is just a, a poem which only contains one vowel. Yeah, but, uh, and the uh, it, it's it's usually like an exercise in primary schools mm -hmm. to to be able to express anything in with just one little one syllable uh, and it's it's possible to do that but you need to think a little bit and a reason why Hungarian is a special language is because you can do this Do you know of 
any other languages that do that? I mean, I know that uh, that Turkish and, and Finnish, uh, off, off the top of my head, use Val Harmony. Um, oh, yeah. But do, um, do you know of any other languages where you can do that? Is it like substitution where you're just substituting that S sound for where the other vowels go? Is that how that's working? No, it's actually, no. So as, as for the first question, I don't really know, but I have heard that uh, really no other language can uh, do that. That's what I heard. I, maybe I'm wrong because I don't okay. know all the languages. Uh, and the other one, uh, whether we substitute the a sound. No, that's not how it works. Basically, these words actually only contain a. So from oh. your from your from your vocabulary, from the words that you know, you have to use those which only contain a. Yeah. So, but in hung oh, in hung yeah in Hungarian we have a lot of synonyms. You know, like. Uh, and Hung Hungarians really don't like repetition. So when we talk, we always try to avoid the words that we've already said before. Mm -hmm. you know? And so we, we try to use a different word for the same thing or a different explanation uh, for the same thing. Uh, yeah, and so this is how it can be that almost for everything you can make up uh, definition or explanation, which only contains one vowel. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite interesting. That is, that's, yeah. that's probably one of the most unique things that I've heard in, uh, we're on language, I, I believe, number four, and that's probably uh -huh. the most unique thing that I've heard um, uh, in uh, interviewing people about languages. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, um, there are many, many Hungarian inventors in the world who, and, and even today, like uh, combinatorics is, uh, is a field where I know that there are many uh, very smart Hungarian, like invent, or not like a com combinatorics expert, or I don't know. Uh, and uh, they all say that the reason why they can be so successful is because of the language, of the Hungarian language, because it makes them think in a completely different way than it, than than other people. So the the language, yeah. yeah, yeah, the language uh, makes them think in a completely different. Like they they look at things differently because of the language that they speak. So it's very interesting. Interesting, like the Rubik's cube was is a Rub Rubik was Hungarian. So uh -huh. yeah, it makes me wonder wonder if uh, if picking up Hungarian as uh, would be, I guess, good brain therapy, you know, to you know, like really start firing different areas of the brain to um, to <laughs> just improve in, in uh, things like music. And I, I know a, a lot of, of Hungarian musicians, I, I watch a yeah. lot of, of uh, classical music mm -hmm. on YouTube because my profession is, is music and um, some of the greatest players I, I've seen come out of Hungary. And yeah. mm -hmm. I just wonder if, if, you know, language has anything to do with that because they're just, their skill is brilliant. <laughs> well, I, I'm not, I cannot be sure of that, but I, I do know that there are many students that I get who are 60, 70 years old or even older, and the, re the, the when I ask them why do you want to start learning Hungarian, they they will tell me like they would like to keep their brains fresh. Yeah, they they just wanna they just wanna uh, explore a different way of thinking so as to keep their brains from you know uh, like I don't know going going bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it's definitely worth uh, further exploration, you know, and um, that's definitely something I'm going to be looking into even even after this video segment is over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are just yeah, so many many uh, different things to to say about about the language because it's really unique. You know, it really has no no uh, like no. Mm, relative, like how do I, how should I say, no relative language or like mm -hmm. no, no other language is similar to, to, to it. And 
Yeah, so it's it's really unique, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And um, you know, there's I, I I usually teach through tongue twisters as well, uh -huh. and there is one that you know my my students uh, often flip like freak out uh, with. <laughs> uh, I can show you uh, that one. So yeah, so that. That 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 eh, that 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 So that would that actually is a sentence, and it means that you did this pretended deed. You you doer of pretended deeds, and yeah. So that would be that 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 sounds a little bit like Morse code, maybe. Yeah, but you know, this is just something special. The language itself is is it sounds really nice, I think, and you know, there are long vowels. There are many different types of letters, and you know, it's very straightforward. If if you would like to read Hungarian, I think you can read after our first class. After our first lesson, you will be able to read, because uh, if you learn how to uh, pronounce each letter, the the pronunciation of the letters never changes. Yeah. So if I see an e, eh, it will always be e, eh. and it doesn't matter what it follows. If it's at the end of the word or it doesn't matter, and nothing matters. It's always e. Eh. Yeah. So if you learn how one letter sounds, it'll always sound like that. Okay. So that's pretty good. Yeah. But for example, uh, the the longest word in Hungarian would be "megszentség telenít hetetlenségeskedéseitekér." And that's one word. Yeah, megszentség telenít hetetlenségeskedéseitekér. Yeah. You type that really fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so the, the 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 stem of this is saint. Yeah, okay. saint. It means saint. Yeah, it's holy, sacred. Okay. And everything else is a suffix. Uh -huh. Everything else is just put up, like put on top of this. Uh, yeah, like mag. And then, shig shig means ness. Telen means like, un. Eat is like if I. Like, like these are the hat is can, atlen is unable. So like, these are all different uh, suffixes. And what you can notice here is that all of them have either a, e, or e, because the because the vowel for cent. E uh -huh. is in in the same group in vowel harmony as the e a e, and so that's why you will never see any other uh, vowel than what it uh, with in the same word than what its group. Yeah, uh, then it's yeah yeah, so that's vowel harmony. Yeah, so I was wondering, uh, a person that starts from from square one in Hungarian. Yeah. How about how long if they're if they're doing regular lessons, um, what would first of all what do you consider regular lessons like twice a week or what do you think is sufficient for a person who's serious about studying Hungarian? Yeah, uh, so in my experience, once a week is didn't prove to be enough. Yeah, once a week was really not enough because if we study once a week because of the big difference. Uh, of of the two lang like whatever whatever the 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 um, the student speaks the difference will be pretty big between Hungarian and that language so uh, so once a week is not enough because in that one week he will also he or she will forget what we've studied and we have to start the same material again and then on the next week start again next week start again uh, so I think uh, three times. Uh, a week would be already something that we could work with and we could progress, but in in with with such a language, 
a really important thing is to also practice outside of the lesson. And don't don't think that you can learn just by talking to me. Uh, you have you should be able to, you should do the homework. You should practice at home. You should listen to the audio files that I send. Uh, you should uh, try to actively use it, even talk to yourself. That's how I learned English. I was always talking to myself. Uh, but, um, um, you know, I, I, had, I had a student who really, uh, like, determined that he would, you know, not do anything for one whole month, uh, take a break from work, take a break from all duties, and just, like, from morning to evening, just <laughs> learn Hungarian for one whole month. And he, he is, he speaks really well now. He speaks wow. really well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I'm, oh, I'm for really those of us, oh, for those of us that have, a, uh, have to, to work or go to school and uh -huh. stuff like that, if, okay, let's say um, we're taking lessons three times a week and doing, doing the homework. So we're pretty serious about it. Um, yeah. How long does it, do you think that it, it takes to start being able to uh, kind of get through that A1 level, maybe A2, like where you're able to um, do some greetings, uh, mm -hmm. ask for directions, and just get your basic, basic needs across? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think the ba the very basics could be learned in half a year with that mm -hmm. with that uh, pace, but like not just like, but you understand why uh, you're saying things. You understand like how to formulate these sentences. You don't just learn them by heart, but you understand the grammar behind it and everything. Sure. The very basics would be half a year, and I think to get to an A two level, one year would probably be uh enough um it mm, yeah so many factors so, there are so so many factors yeah so many factors um what is your favorite thing uh, what is your favorite thing about teaching hungarian well uh, so i just really like the language itself i really like that it's uh so unique, but I can also relate it to other languages. Uh, and uh, I just really like to see how students realize that there is a, another way of thinking. Like it, you don't have to speak uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the way that you learn. You don't have to think in the way that you learn. There is another world outside, which you might be unaware of. And yes. uh, and Hungarian opens a new door of, of 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 putting together a sentence in a way that you would have never even imagined. Uh, so I think that that kind of like uh, realization that students have, like how awesome is this and that. Uh, yeah, that's why that's why I like teaching the language. Yeah. Absolutely, I. I... I really, really appreciate all the examples that you've given, and um, yeah. you really, really uh, shed a whole bunch of light on Hungarian for me because I didn't know half of this. I mean, I yeah. I knew about the uh, the stuff the suffixes and the agglutinative agglutinative nature of the language, but that was pretty much it. This is this has been a real gold mine. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, the, the thing the thing about Hungarian, you know, is if you look at a sentence, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, and like uh, you might not recognize the parts of the sentence at first, and mm -hmm. then you might say, oh, this doesn't make any sense. Well, th this is why it's good to have a teacher, because then you will be able, able to see how it makes sense, and you will realize that it actually makes sense, but just not the way that you thought. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, that that makes me curious to know. Okay, this is not something that one should try to to do on their own. I, I know there are some languages that um, they're close enough to to English to to mm -hmm. where you can you can do the YouTube and the um, the memorize and and the and the apps oh, yeah. and things and and get pretty far by yourself. But it seems like Hungarian is something that you 
probably definitely need some guidance in if you want to progress. Yeah, uh, I, I would I would say that the re the one of the factors why that's I think true is because such uh, applications as Duolingo and other ones that I know are just not so developed in Hungarian yet. You know, like uh, so you might start doing these on your own and uh, there are, there might be some gaps which they don't explain and then sure. that's when they that's when people start looking for my help as well to to make sense of like what was this jump in 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 the in the material uh yeah and and just one more thing i wanted uh, to add is that as i mentioned that uh, the hungarian government made it much easier to gain citizenship if you if you learn the hungarian language quite well uh, then it's possible that you could get a citizenship nowadays and um, and uh, so I also help people with preparing for this interview and uh, you know if, if you are just preparing for the interview itself then you know we are just uh, really concentrating on the areas that they might be asking about and in that case you know it doesn't have to take years to actually be able to pass that interview but uh, with like a focused approach uh, a few months could be enough for that and it's it's really amazing how uh, if there is that goal to become a hungarian citizen people learn much faster and realize things much much easier yes so, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah well, so it's it's really cool it, yes, it is, and <laughs> I thank you so much, Jolt. I, I really appreciate the interview. Yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah, me too, me too. I hope it was good. So what did you think? Is Hungarian the language for you? I definitely urge you to give it a try. Be sure to come back for week six when we find out what the mystery language is. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.